In this video, I'm going to be solving a circular motion problem that is a common lab. And what we have here is we have a plastic or glass tube. We have a piece of string, something like a fishing line connecting one mass to another mass. And as this 50 gram mass is going around in a circle, it's going to create tension in the string and then pulling up on this object over here, which is an unknown mass, which is the main variable that we're going to be looking for. So if you were in a lab setting, this is what you want to do. Um, first of all, you want to make sure you take a look at all of your forces. And we have uh, the force of gravity on this mass. And then we have a force of tension pulling it in. And then for our second one, we also have a force of gravity down and that same force of tension pulling that object upwards. So the goal is to swing this around to create a centripetal force. So as a, this object is swinging around in a circular path, it creates tension in this line. And then the goal is to have this mass stay relatively still so that your Ft equals your Fg. Now, in reality, we have this mass over here, and it has a force of gravity pulling it down, so there will be some slight angle here, um, but in the lab setting, it's a little bit difficult to get that exact angle or, or that exact radius, so we're just gonna assume it's an ideal situation where that object is just held horizontal from its axis that it's revolving around. Now, if we take a look at our mass over here, we wanna make sure we convert that mass in two kilograms by dividing it by a thousand grams that would make it 0 0.05 kilograms and we're going to go ahead and physically measure that radius uh, technically you want the radius to be from the axis to the center of mass of that object so we'll just say roughly like the geometric center of it which should be good enough and then we'll say that we get a radius of 0.3 meters for that. So we have the radius, we have a mass to work with, and we're gonna want to find the velocity, and the velocity is going to be two pi r, which is the circumference of our circle, over t. And it looks like we have that radius, so all we have to do is measure the t, the period, the amount of time it takes to complete one circle. The most effective way, or one of the most effective ways to do that is to let it complete 10 circles because one circle might be a little fast. So as you have this rotate around a circle and you catch the rhythm of it, as soon as you spot it in a specific area, you wanna start by saying zero because it hasn't completed a circle yet. You'll say zero, it'll go around, and then you would say one, two, three, and then so on. You get some kind of total time. So maybe we'll get a total time of say 11 seconds. And then we're going to divide that by its 10 revolutions. And then that would be a single period of 1.1 seconds. All right. Now we have a fairly accurate period. And what we want to do is we want to set up our calculation. Um, our main calculation is this, the force of tension that's pointing inward is the centripetal force because it's pointing towards the center of the circle. So that Ft equals mv squared over r. So that's basically mass times the centripetal acceleration of v squared over r. So we're gonna go ahead and plug in the values we have. We have a mass of 0 0.5 kilograms that we got earlier. And then our velocity is going to be this substituted in over here. So it's going to be two pi times r over t. That whole value is gonna be squared because it's v squared. And then the whole um, numerator divided by 0.3 meters that radius 
So if you go ahead and plug all of that into your calculator, you'll get a force of tension that equals 0 0.49 newtons. So 0 0.49 newtons is your centripetal force. And this force of tension, because it's the same um, string, these force of tension um, pulling the object in the centripetal direction in towards the center of the circle is being redirected downwards and pulling this object up. So this force of tension of 0 0.49 is gonna translate over here and that 0 0.49 newtons equals mg, which is mass times 9.8. And if you go ahead and divide both sides by 9.8, then we get our final solution and our mass turns out to be 0.05 kilograms. And that is our unknown mass. So to recap, what we wanna do is make sure we do a good job of measuring the radius from the center of our circle to the center of mass of the object. And then from there, doing an accurate job timing, um, we're gonna go ahead and time 10 total revolutions and that total time divided by that 10 revolutions will give us the time of a single revolution, which would be known as the period, our capital T in our velocity formula. And then we can use that radius and then that period to find a velocity to plug into our centripetal force calculation of Ft equals mv squared over r. Um, go ahead and calculate that velocity, plug in that mass, divide by that radius, which gives us a force of tension that translates over here to this force of tension equaling this force of gravity, which in turn found us the unknown mass of our suspended object as our object was rotating around in a circle. So I hope that was helpful in helping you understand and execute an accurate and efficient way of solving an unknown mass for the Circular Motion Lab. Thank you for watching and listening.